Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are jumping into another food styling tutorial where we're gonna be looking at soups. Today we're gonna to be styling two different soups in very different colors, and I'm gonna be sharing my best tips for soup styling with you. I've also got a free food styling toolkit for you that you can download down in the description, so check that out and let's jump right in. So the first step when styling soups is to pick the right bowl for the job. You don't want something too deep as it's gonna conceal everything and it will be difficult to get the angle right with your camera. So you wanna pick something that is not too shallow, but shallow enough that we can focus on all of that detail on the top and give you options with your camera for doing straight on or 45 degree angle shots as well as flat lays. You also wanna think about the color of your bowl that's gonna complement your soup the best. So this is gonna depend on the style of the photo you're going for and also the soup. So sometimes a really dark bowl might make sense with a lot of texture, something rustic. And other times you might want something really clean and modern and light. Next up, there are some essential food styling tools that I always have on hand when I'm styling soup. So I have cocktail sticks, which are great for swirling around in the soup to create that perfect ripply swirl on top. Culinary tweezers are always useful. I mean, I have these on hand for pretty much any food I'm styling, but you'll see how we're going to use them for placing garnishes later in this video. I always have some cotton buds for little cleanups, particularly around the rim of soup. It can very easily just get little splashes and these are great for cleaning those up. And also a small paintbrush, which I use to brush extra oil or anything on the top of any garnishes to keep them looking fresh. So let's start with plating up this pumpkin soup. So I've chosen a dark bowl for this shoot because this scene is all about cozy, warming scenes of a warm soup on a dark winter day. A light and bright vibe just doesn't fit this thing. And I've also gone for a nice matte bowl with a little bit of texture. I've got a small ramekin in the bowl upside down that's just tall enough to support my toppings, but it won't be visible when I pour my soup in. This is gonna stop my toppings from all sinking and falling into my soup and give me a bit more control over my garnishes. I'm gonna pour my soup into a jug before pouring it into my bowl because this helps me be neater and avoid some unnecessary cleanup. I've also got my soup fridge cold because I don't want that heat messing with my garnishes and causing everything to wilt while I'm styling it. So I'm pouring over the soup and I'm making sure that that ramekin is just below the surface so my toppings have a really good base. Next, I'm gonna add a cream swirl to the top of my soup. So the key for a great cream swirl is to use a cream that is the same thickness as your soup. If your cream's too thin, it's gonna go watery and separate and splodgy and it's not gonna look good. I've got some heavy dairy cream here, but full fat coconut milk from a can also works great for a plant-based option and you'll see me using that in the next soup we're going to style. So I like to pour my cream into a little bowl and then use a teaspoon to create some nice swirls. I also like a few drips dotted around as well as it gives a nice organic look but it also creates some texture. You don't want to overdo it with the swirl but you can keep going until you're happy and if you have a disaster and you need to start again just stir in the cream into your soup and try again. It's such a small amount of cream it's not going to affect the color of your soup base if you mix it thoroughly. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with some olive oil in an oil dressing jug. This spout that it comes with creates a really thin, even stream of oil, which is important when you want to control the oil pour. If you do it directly from the bottle, the cap is going to be too wide and you're going to create big blobs of oil rather than that nice, delicate styled swell. I just picked mine up from a supermarket. It's a very basic salad dressing pourer, but it's really handy when you're doing oil swells. Next, I'm going to add the base of my garnishes, which is some small pumpkin cubes. And I fried these in a little frying pan with some oil and a little bit of salt and pepper just until they were lightly golden brown. I want it to look like roasted pumpkin, but I didn't want to use actual roasted pumpkin because it would have been too soft. So before I put them on, I'm tossing them with a little bit of extra oil just to make sure they aren't dry and look nice and hot and fresh on my soup. Then I'm going to add them in layers on my dish. So I don't just want to put a huge handful on straight away. I'm going to put a few on to create a base and then use my tweezers to place a few more in a precise way. The little dish that I added underneath is going to stop these from sinking so that I've got time to add all my toppings and they're not going to move when I move my bowl. Next, I'm going to add a freshly cracked black 
pepper, which is gonna help blend these layers together. So the pumpkin cubes already have pepper on them. So by adding a bit more freshly ground pepper, it's gonna connect that layer with the soup itself and the cream and just create a bit of a blend between them. And for a pop of color and a flavor that naturally goes amazingly with pumpkin, I've got some fresh sage leaves. So whenever you're adding garnishes to anything, not just soups, make sure that they make sense. Don't use something just because it's pretty, it's just gonna be confusing and not make any sense. So when I'm adding leaves, I'm gonna spend time picking the best ones that aren't too big and add them to the top. I'm gonna put them on a damp tea towel while I wait to keep them fresh and stop them wilting. So just before I add the final touches, I'm giving the pumpkin a little brush with some extra virgin olive oil, just in case it went a little bit dry while I was waiting. And you can also keep this handy on set if you need to do any final touch-ups before your photo. Again, I'm using the tweezers to put the sage leaves exactly where I want them. And I'm making sure that I'm taking time to position them to look even but natural. Okay, now we're on to a completely different style. This time I'm shooting a cold green gazpacho. I'm keeping another upturned dish in the bowl as I'm gonna create some really delicate cucumber ribbons for the top and those will definitely need a base to sit on. So after I've poured my soup in, again, making sure that that bowl is just underneath the surface of my soup so it's not visible, I'm gonna create another cream swirl, but this time I'm using full fat canned coconut milk. So make sure you give the can a good shake before you open it as the fat and the water in the coconut milk tend to separate when they've been standing for a while and mixing them after it's open is a lot more difficult than just giving it a good shake. Coconut cream is slightly thinner than heavy dairy cream but it still creates a really nice effect. I'm also going to use a teaspoon to make this swirl and control where I want the pattern to be. I just really like this method and I find it gives me a lot of control. To make the cucumber ribbons I used a vegetable peeler to cut lengthways down some mini cucumbers. This created small manageable strips that had a nice balance of flesh and seeds. I then put them in a bowl of salty water for about 15 minutes, which helps the strips to soften and become more pliable. So that way they're going to hold their shape when I fold them up. If I didn't soak them first, they would be way too rigid and I wouldn't be able to style them into ribbons. They would either just break or they wouldn't lay properly. So to style them, I squeezed the excess water gently off of each slice and folded them into little ruffles before placing them around the middle of the soup on top of that ramekin. I just love the texture and shapes created by these ribbons. It's something unexpected and interesting, but very simple. Next, I'm going to add all of my herbs. So in this soup, we've got parsley, dill and mint. So I want all of those three to be included in my toppings. And I've prepared each of the herbs in different ways to keep it visually interesting. I have finally chopped some of the parsley and then I've also got some whole parsley parsley leaves with whole mint leaves and sprigs of dill. This is going to help keep the visual interest on top of the soup and let each ingredient stand out on its own. I've also got some diagonally sliced spring onions for a bit of freshness and another shape and texture. So mostly for all of these elements, I'm using my culinary tweezers to place them as I don't want my warm hands damaging the herbs. This is a great trick when you're working with something delicate like herbs or chopped vegetables during your styling. Lastly, I'm going to sprinkle a bit of black pepper, which I've ground directly into my hand, mostly because I only want to sprinkle this around the edge, not over the cucumber ribbons, because I don't really want pepper on them. So this gives me a bit more control over where it lands. Let me know in the comments which of these tips you found the most useful and which you're looking forward to putting into practice in your next soup shoot. Don't forget to download your free food styling toolkit. Link is down below. Like this video and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one.